Hey guys, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Some exciting news tonight. I'm gonna show you how to configure the Express LRS gyro, but before we get started, we have to do some housekeeping on this one, okay? First off, this is not mainline stuff. It is experimental. So with that in mind, don't fly this on your good airplanes. Like you have to be willing to test, all right? So you have to treat this as like alpha. And uh, I'm just, just being clear up front. Second, this is not a beginner video for people who've never touched Express LRS. This is for people who have some familiarity, who are willing to do a little bit of extra work. Um, it's not meant, this is not a retail product, okay? It's not a retail product yet. You have to do some work. It's This is a little bit science fair. So I just want to set that expectation up front because a lot of times when I do these more advanced early stage videos, people come in, they're like, but I, this, I don't want to go through all that just to turn on a gyro. I'll just stick with an A3 Super 4. Fine. That's what you should do. <laughs> this is for people who are willing to experiment. So I just want to be clear about that up front. And I will also tell you that I do not expect when this is ready for retail, that these will be the procedures we go through. I expect it to be much simpler much simpler. So I just wanted to put those caveats out there and do a little housekeeping because people get excited about these things and they say, well, you know, I, I don't believe, I can't believe we have to go through all that for a simple gyro. This is early stage. So just we'll start with that. Okay. Before we go anywhere else though, I do want to show you the gyro. So just so you can see before anything goes wrong with my live stream, there it is. See the, see the receiver moving up and down. There's the pitch. So I'm going to pitch the nose down and you can see the elevator correcting up, right? There's the elevator pitching up. And then I'm gonna pitch the nose down, or sorry, up, and there's, there's the elevator saying, wait, go back down, go back down. Now I'm gonna roll the gyro left and right. So I'm gonna roll it to the left. I'm rolling it to port. You can see the right aileron coming up. You see it? See that right aileron coming up like there? Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll to the starboard and you'll see the left aileron come up. And then we'll do a little bit of yaw. The yaw only does like a rate mode correction as far as I can tell right now. So it's not like a level mode where it's gonna you know hold that position until you're back to some center point on yaw. Just not the way it works. Now, maybe in hover mode, that'll be different, but for just normal level mode, that's not the case. So I wanted to show you that first. So now before anything else happens, you can say, I saw it happen. And the demo unit that I'm using is a beta FPV 14 channel and the gyro. Link for the gyro is in the description. We will cover that detail in just a few minutes. But the first thing I wanted to do is show, show it working. And then by the way, if you want one of these little mock-up models, this is called the RCVR1. I have links for that in the description. Uh, that'll take you to my Etsy store. And then links for the gyro are in the description and the receiver in the description. Those will take you to Amazon. Those are affiliate links. So if you use my affiliate links, the channel gets a little kickback, blah, blah, blah. You understand how it works. Okay. So with all that out of the way, let's cover the steps. I want to go over the steps with you guys so you understand what's involved. And then I'm going to walk you through it. Okay, I'm going to walk you through everything. First off, a reminder, it is experimental. Experimental. Do not put this in your $2,000 airplane and then tell me that it crashed because the gyro froze up. I, I will laugh at you mercilessly and say, well, you shouldn't have done that. You should have put it in an EPP crash test hobby grim reaper and tested with that first <laughs> or an albatross or or some other profile plane you know you gotta you gotta embrace the nature this is early stage okay step number one the mpu 6050 you want to wire that to your gyro and let me bring the big camera do i have to bring i don't want to switch back and forth give me a second let me let me add the big camera to this uh this display here hold on a second guys let me just add that video capture big camera I'm just going to add that real quick. Okay. That way I don't have to keep flipping back and forth between scenes. Okay. So we're going to, I'm going to show you the diagram for this in just a minute, but you are going to wire a gyro to the receiver and I'll show you how to do it for the beta FPV. And I will also show you how to do it with the radio master ER eight. Okay. So we have two of them to show you tonight. Okay, we'll get to that in just a minute, but that's step number one is you gotta wire it to the receiver. Number two, step number two is you'll download the fork. I will show you that as well. I'll show you where to get the fork and how to download it. Then I'll show you the steps you need to use in the configurator to compile and flash. And there's a big uh, caveat, in here, caveat in here about using user defines. I'll show you that. Then you're gonna go into hardware HTML. You're gonna make two little changes. Very simple, it's not hard. I know it looks a little scary, but it's not hard. It literally, once you do these steps, it's like five minutes. 
And then you'll open the model page and verify there's a pin change. And then finally, number six, you'll bind the receiver to the radio. And then we'll go into the radio and do the ELR, ELRS Lua setup. And yes, the gyro right now, as of today, is configurable via Lua. How cool is that? So we can make our gy gyro changes right on our radio at the field. No cards necessary. I just love this community, man. It's so cool. Okay. L okay. So let's work on step number one. I'm going to bring my notes up so I can go back and, and we'll start, we'll start getting into it. Let's get into the material. Okay. So step number one is to, let's see, we want this one, not that one is to wire the MPU 6050 gyro to the ES or to the receiver. So in order to do that, here it is. Here's the wiring diagram. Let me put this thing away. There you go. Now I gotta, I'm gonna give credit to Alex Wiegen. I hope I didn't butcher that. It's either Alex Wiegen or Alex Wiegen or Wigen. Sorry, Alex, for if I butchered your name. But here's the wiring diagram really quickly. And it's very simple. It's four wires. You need ground, positive, and then SEL and SDA, okay? And the SEL and SDA are straight through wires. You don't cross them over like we do with UART wiring. It's a straight connection. So if it says SCL on the gyro, you wire to SCL on the receiver, okay? And then SDA on the gyro goes to SDA on the receiver. It's that simple. So very simple wiring diagram. This shows you how to do it on the beta FPV 14 channel. And I will now show you how it's gonna be done on the Radio Master, but I also have to give you a caveat on the Radio Master, and that's that right now I have the gyro powered by the rail. So you can see right here, that's the battery port on the ER8, it's the last one, and I have the gyro connected to ground and positive right there, okay? that Those two are going to my ground and positive on the gyro. And then I have pins number seven and eight going to SCL and SDA up on top, okay? So pins number seven and eight go to SCL and SDA up top. And I'll put that up there so you can see it. There we go. So there's your wiring diagram for the gyro. Get a close look at that. And remember number seven right here, this orange one is number seven. That one right there goes to the third one down, and then the red wire, this is number pin number eight, that goes to the fourth one down, okay? That's the ER8 uh, setup, the wiring diagram for the ER8. This is just my power wire, okay? That's just to a BEC, that's all that is, just power, you can ignore that one. So this is your wiring for the gyro on the ER8. I'm using power on the battery lead, and then SC, SCL and S sorry, SCL and SDA. Now, here's the caveat. We're powering a gyro from the servo rail and servos make noise, they make electrical noise. You might wanna consider using a BEC instead, okay? I did check, by the way, in case you're wondering, I checked the voltage coming out of the UR port and that voltage rail is common to this voltage rail, there is continuity between them, although there's some resistance. So I'm not sure if there's some kind of LDO or regulator in the way, but it is common. And I'm not, I can't, I can't assure you that you'll have a clean power signal. So it might not be a bad idea to take a little mini BEC off of the power port, the battery, you know, the power line right here, the power wire, and then run a BEC between the servos and the gyro. Not probably wouldn't be a terrible idea. I'm not saying you have to, I'm saying it wouldn't be a bad idea, okay? So that's the wiring on the ER8. All right, so step number one is complete. We covered, let me hide this, and we'll bring up our steps again. So I showed you how to wire the MPU 6050 gyro to the RX for the beta 14 channel and the Radio Master ER8. Okay, step number two is to download the fork. So let's take a look at downloading the fork. I've got the configurator up right there. I'm gonna bring this up now. I gotta tell you guys, first off, thanks to Alex uh, for, he's the guy who forked this. This is the working copy that I used. I believe there may be other forks out there. I don't know. I haven't gone through like a, a you know, any. I haven't done any research on GitHub to search, search for it. This was a link that Rob shared with me and it works. So there may be others and you, you might be interested in trying the others, that's fine. All I'm gonna tell you is that I'm using Alex's fork and again, this has not been merged in the ELRS yet. So I know it's in work. Brian talked about it on our Pilot Jam on Friday. So we know it's in work, but right now it's not been merged. So you're gonna go to Alex's 
uh, GitHub, and you're gonna you're gonna go to his uh, his fork on ExpressLRS. Okay, so the link for this is in the description, and it's right here. It's ExpressLRS. Okay, so thanks to Alex for sharing his work with the rest of us. Very very nicely done. All right, I also want to scroll down and show you a few little details before I show you the code, just so you understand. Take a look at his to-do list. You can see what's planned, okay? So in terms of what's available right now, you've got rate mode. That is the uncommanded movement mode, wind rejection mode, stabilize mode, whatever you want to call it. But that's the one where you just get a temporary correction, okay? That's available now. There's a safe mode, which does some kind of limiting, like it won't let you roll more than 45 degrees. There's a level mode, which means it tries to return itself to level when you let go of the sticks. And check this out. There's a launch mode, with uh, which does level plus a little pitch up for a hand launch plane. How cool is that, right? Right? Isn't that cool? And there's a hover mode, also very cool. And there's a couple more on the docket. He's got knife edge mode and a lock or hold mode. And I think that's it in terms of modes. Uh, there's also some work planned for VTL mixing and Elevon mixing. So right now it doesn't look like the gyro can do VTL mixing, which means this would not be a great solution for say a wing, right? Or sorry, a VTL. Um, it says Elevon mixing. I guess that would be a wing as well. So probably, probably not. You're probably looking at a standard aircraft at this point. Okay. So there's that. And I just wanted to show you, okay, now in terms of getting the code, once you've clicked on his GitHub, you click on the little green button and there's a couple of different ways to do this. If you know GitHub, you can do a Git, you can do a Git clone, or if you want, you can download the zip. Once you download the zip, you're going to get that on your computer. Then all you, all you have to do after that is open it up and you unpack it somewhere on your hard drive. Okay. So I'll go ahead and open this and maybe I'll open it. Maybe I'll just show it in my folder. There we go. I'll open that and then extract it and just put it somewhere on your hard drive where you can remember. In my case, I put it on my D drive. So just unpack the archive. That's all you got to do. And I will show you on my computer where I have it. So here it is on mine. I put it on my D drive in a folder called Git. And then this is the archive itself. And importantly, this is the SRS, the source files. That's the folder you're going to point to. This will be created when you unpack the archive. Okay, source file that or source folder. That's the one you're looking for. Okay. All right, let's go back to the Blackboard and make sure we're doing this in order. Okay, so we've downloaded the fork now. Next, we're going to compile and flash the receiver with some user to find. So let's cover that. So we're going to switch back over to the workspace and I'm going to bring up the configurator and here we go in the configurator. So remember I told you you're pointing at that source folder, remember? So if I choose folder, it's right here. Remember, it's, this is what I showed you just a minute ago. The Express LRS gyro support SRC. That's what we're looking for. Okay. And, and you're going to do get local up at the top. You see up here where it says get local local you're using that one and then pick your target so radio master in my case is radio master 2.4 gigahertz er8 and then i recommend flashing it via uart i didn't have i it failed on me trying to do it via wi-fi it worked fine doing it via uart so do it via uart and then here's the other critical one you have to click under user defined you have to switch from standard mode to manual mode okay switch to manual mode and then you'll click on this copy from standard mode. And what that does is it pulls in your user defines like your SSID, your Wi-Fi password, your Wi-Fi on interval, uh, what your regulatory domain is. And then here's the other critical path, right? You have to add this, these two lines right here. Uh, I'm going to pause here. Go ahead and grab a screenshot of this. You have to add this to your user defines. D has gyro underscore gyro. And then D gyro underscore device underscore MPU 6050. Okay. You add those two commands in there under your user defines. And then when you're done, you can go ahead and flash it. Okay. I'm not going to flash it because I told you this is not an instructional video to show you how to do flashing on express LRS. It's just not what I'm doing today. You have to know how to do this stuff. And it's also a little bit of a gating factor to keep people from doing something bad to their stuff. So if you don't know how to do this, go watch some videos and learn about Express LRS and then come back and try it again. So next you'll flash. And remember, I, I had more luck flashing via UART. So plug in a, 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 a dongle and flash via UART. That worked fine for me. Okay, that's how you set up your... Uh, 
configuration environment on ExpressLRS Configurator. And then the next thing, step number four, we're gonna open the hardware HTML page and we have a few changes to make. So let me show you what that looks like. All right, hardware HTML. Uh, we'll go back to the workspace and here we go. So under hardware HTML, so you open up your web UI on your receiver and you put in a slash forward slash hardware.html. Okay, you just add that to your URL up top. And then your normal URL looks just like this, okay? So all you do is put in a slash like that, leaning to the right, and just type hardware.html, okay? And that will bring you to this page. And on this page, this is for the ER8, not the beta. This is only for the ER8, caveat. And I also wanna make sure I give credit to Peter. Peter's the one that sourced the pin mapping. That He is the source of information. I'm not saying he didn't get it from somewhere. That's who I found it from. I found it from Peter. So maybe Peter had some help. I don't know. Maybe he just figured it out on his own, but I'm crediting Peter because that's where I learned of it. So you're going to go into this field, the PWM output pins, and you're going to make it look just like this. 14, 12, 15, 2, 4, 9. The stock one will also have comma 19 and comma 22. All you have to do is take those two off. So this is the way you want it to look, just like this, 14, 12, 15, 2, 4, 9. The other caveat is that we are remapping pins 7 and 8 for use in, as SCL and SDA, okay? So we're stealing pins 7 and 8 for SCL and SDA. Now you might ask, well, is there anything on the board? I checked with Radio Master and the answer is no. The only, there, well, okay, hold on. Let me caveat that. The answer is yes. You can get SCL and SDA off the board if you want to solder onto the pads of the processor, which I don't. So that's a really fine soldering job. If you have that kind of soldering skill, then go ahead and figure it out. You're, you're a smart dude. If you can solder that small, you already know how to figure this stuff out. So grab the SCL and SDA pins off the, off the MCU pad if you want. <laughs> but if you don't, you want to be mortal like the rest of us, you're going to steal pins 7 and 8. That's why I'm using an ER8 and not an ER6. We can do it with an ER6, by the way. And in the case of an ER6, you're let me um, let me just show you on an ER6 what you're going to do. You're going to have 12, you're, sorry, you're going to have 14, 12, 15, and 2. So it will look like that, 15 and 2. And then for your pins... On SCL, you're going to grab pin number four, and for SDA, you're going to grab pin number two, uh, nine, pin number nine, okay? So if you're using an ER6, this is what you get, but keep in mind, now you only have four pins of output, okay? You have only four pins of PWM output. That's why I used an ER8 instead of a six, okay? So once you've done that, you save that configuration, all right? Save your configuration. And then you probably should reboot the receiver. I'm not sure the reboot is strictly necessary, but I would recommend it. Go ahead and reboot it. Get back into the Wi-Fi mode, and then we're going to go back to the Blackboard and make sure we're following our steps. So number four, we opened the hardware HTML page. We changed our PWM, our SCL, and our SDA pins, okay? The next step is to open the model page and verify our pin changes. So here we go back to the workspace. And you're going to go to your model page and note it, this is an ER8. You see the firmware up here, ER8, right here? And you can see that I only have six pins. That's a super important confirmation to make because if this reads seven and eight, something's wrong. You have the wrong firmware. Your, your hardware HTML changes didn't take place. Something went wrong, okay? Um, by the way, one other thing, because I know some of the developer types will say it, you can also upload a JSON to the uh, hardware.html page, and I actually pinned uh, Peter's JSONs in my ExpressLRS channel on Discord. So if you want to pull those down and, f and just upload the JSON, you can do that as well. I just wanted to mention that for the people who like just uploading config files, you can do that. Okay, so pay attention. You, you need pins one, two, three, four, five, six. If you don't, If you see seven and eight, something's not right, stop right there and figure it out. Okay, so that's all. And then after you make those changes, you hit save. Okay, so we are rounding third and heading for home, guys. After that, you're going to open your model page and verify your pin change. That's when we just covered. Um, and then you're going to do your bind. And the bind should be pretty easy. Use a binding phrase. Uh, nothing new here. Same old process for binding. That's it. And then number seven, we're into the Lua setup. So now all the work is done, and I know that seems like a lot, but believe me when I tell you that it only takes just a few minutes. 
like really honest, it only takes a few minutes. Once you, once you get it, once you get the process worked out, you're going to be done in absolutely no time. Okay. So now let's take a look at the, you at the Lua. And again, I'm going to just show you, uh, I'm going to show you the modes one last time. So this is the level mode. I only have mine set up to do level mode. I didn't use the, I did level and rate. That's it. Okay. So off level and rate. All right. So there's the level mode. Here is the rate mode in rate mode. This is what like the wind rejection mode, right? So you notice, see how I give the, I, I give the gyro a twitch and the aileron reacts and it goes back to neutral. You get that? That's the wind rejection mode. That's exactly what we expect on the wind rejection mode. Oh, you know what? I forgot something super, super important. Let me go back. Sorry, I want to go back and cover this because this is super important. In to limit on the PWM output, notice that there is a limit min and a limit max. This is where you limit the maximum output from the gyro on your PWM. It's kind of like an output screen on Edge TX. Super important to do because when I first set up my little RCVR2, what ended up happening was I did a movement and it slammed the control all the way up. And I was like, wait, what the hell? You have to limit your, you have to go into your um, model page on, on the UI for the receiver and limit. And this is pulse width, by the way, if you don't recognize that, that's pulse width. So on this particular model that I'm using, uh, you can see I only have a, a 200 uh, PPM US pulse width on, on this particular setup. It's very, very small. I don't need much. It's just very small. So if you're doing something that's, you know, like a 3d plane, you might want to have a 1000 to 2000 PPM, you know, range, uh, pulse width range. But if you have to limit the throws on the gyro, this is where you do it in the web UI. Okay. Very important. Sorry. I forgot about that. That's a very important step because if you don't do that, then what happens is when you move your gyro, it'll slam, it'll slam that control all the way up, which is not what you want. <laughs> okay. Okay. So there we go. There's the rate mode. Again, I'll just give a little roll and you see the aileron makes a correction. Then it goes back to its center spot, right? That's it. That's exactly what we expect. And then also in case you're wondering, it does have a remote master gain. I have mine set on channel seven, which is assignable by the way. So I'm going to turn the gain all the way down to zero. Okay. So I have my dial all the way down. Another cool feature about it because it's edge TX, you know, familiar, you don't have to do the 50, 50 offset and differential. You don't have to do that. It understands negative 100 to positive 100, which is super cool. Cause not all gyros do that, but you can see now that I've got my gyro set all the way to zero and I move my, my gyro, I'm not getting any movement at all. Okay. Now, if I bring my gain back up to say 50%, now I move my gyro and you can see, I have just a little bit of movement. So yes, we do have remote master gain. Woohoo! That is so cool, man. I'm loving it. That is what we want on Jira remote master gain and a Lua remote configuration. It's just brilliant. Okay. So that's, that's it on the, on the physical stuff. I'm going to go ahead and set this aside for just a minute and I'm going to show you the Lua. Okay. Cause the Lua part is kind of important. And the first time you see it, you might be a little intimidated, but don't worry. It's not, it's really not that big of a deal. Let me, let me zoom in on this and we'll go through the Lua configuration real quick. It's not hard. If you guys understand gyros at all, it's really, it's really not that big of a deal. So I'm going to back out. This is my main screen for this particular model. It's a testing screen. So, um, you can see I've got my uh, monitor, you know, that's my main screen. So we'll get into the Lua by pressing the system button, press express LRS, and you're going to see the normal, the normal screen. And then once you've seen that, you're going to go down to the bottom to other devices right here, click on other, and then when you click on other, you should see your receiver right there. So there's my beta FPV 14 channel receiver. And now we'll see the magic stuff popping in. By the way, you do not need to change your Lua. The Lua if with the, with the binary configuration that I showed you, the Lua will pick it up all by itself. Okay. So it'll pick it up all on its own. So uh, you'll notice right down here, we have gyro modes right here. Gyro. Notice how that pops in there now, but yours doesn't have that. So you click on gyro modes and this is where you set what you want it to do. So position one is the negative 100. Okay. So that's full away right here. So when I put my, I use my SE switch, SC switch away, and that puts me in level mode. And then position number three is zero. That's right there in the middle. And then position number five is off and that's right here. 
So that's 100. Okay. If you want to see that, we'll go, we'll go, I'll look at the monitor and let you see it. Um, but I'm using level, uh, position number one, position number three and position number five. Let's take a look at the monitor. So you can marry that up for yourself. Oh, I have the monitor right here. What am I doing? Okay. So there's a way you see how I have channel six right there. That's, that's a way. Do I need to zoom out just a little bit? Yeah. Let me zoom out so you can see it all together. Okay, there we go. Okay, so my SC switches away right now, and that is reading negative 100. And I put it in the middle position, it's reading zero, and I put it in the bottom position, and that reads 100, okay? So that's your, that's your setup for setting your rate, all right? Or the, your, the mode that you want the gyro in. Unfortunately, we have to go back into it again. There's no quick way to do it, but it's not too bad. Okay, so gyro modes, there's one last look at that. Again, you can set these to be whatever you want. So we'll just pick an open, we'll pick a position one. And if you press on the jog dial and scroll, you can see the different modes available to you. Okay, so you have off, rate, that's the wind rejection mode, safe, limits the angle to some degree that you specify, and then level mode, that's the one I use. And then there's the launch mode, which is the wings level, 10 degrees up pitch. Um, and then there's the hover mode, okay? So I'm going to leave mine at level and then we'll go back, we'll leave there and we will go on to the next field, which is gains. This is another super important one, but before you get to gains, I almost think that like inputs and outputs should be defined first. So let's go ahead and go into inputs and all we're going to do is on input channel. In my case, I use channel one input channel one that's on the mixer that's coming from the mixer on edge TX and I have mine set for ailerons. So that's the roll axis. Okay. And then if you want to make a change, you can, you can, let's say we'll look at input channel number two, I'll press the jog dial and then scroll. And that brings me to input channel number two. And when I press enter or press on the jog dial that loads up pitch as the function that I'm changing. And if I press it again and go to three, that should be blank because that's my throttle. So I'm not running that through a gyro. And then I'll press it again and we'll go to number four and that should be yaw. Okay, that's the typical AETR on Edge TX. You can do whatever you want. It doesn't matter what you do. You can do whatever you wanna do, whatever makes you happy. But real important here, don't forget to set your mode switch and your gain, okay? So here's mode, that's number six. See how I have that selected for mode? And then number seven, is gain. All right. Now I'm going to show you every, everything that I showed you one through four, that's all normal stuff. Whatever, however you define AETR or whatever, whatever arrangement you want to use on your radio, you might use tear or whatever, any of the others doesn't matter. I'm going to go back to the mixer though and show you six and seven. So you can see how I set up my mode and gain. Okay. So we'll back out of this. We'll go into the model configuration and then into the mixer and in the mixer, you can see right here, I've got channel six. Let's just click it so you can see it. There we go. Channel six, all I did was put a name on there called mode. I set the source to SC and the weight to 100. That's it. That's all you have to do. And then the same thing for the gain. It's actually the same exact thing. On the gain, all I did was set, I, I wrote in the name gain just to keep myself straight. I put the source in as S2. That's my knob right here. And I set the weight at 100. That's it. See, you don't need that offset. You don't need the weight of 50 and the offset of 50. You don't need to do that on this one. It's, it's, it recognizes negative 100 to positive 100, which is super, super cool. Okay, we'll go back into the Lua. Express LRS. Uh, my Google is talking. Let's see. Other devices. Beta FPV. Okay. So we covered... Hey, Google, stop talking. I'm going to unplug that for live streams. Okay, we covered modes. We covered inputs. Let's do outputs, and then we'll do gains, okay? So on outputs, it's the same thing. This is where you could do things like if you have, say, two ailerons, for example, and you want one of them to be reversed, you could have an aileron. And when I say two ailerons, I mean ailerons on two different channels, okay? So say you have one on channel one and one on channel six, for example. If you did that, then you could set your output channel one here to have aileron, and then you could set output channel six to have aileron, and then you could do invert on if you needed to flip the direction of one of your ailerons. Or 
I don't know why you'd use flaps, maybe use spoilers or something like that. You could do it there as well. So the point is that in the outputs, you can specify what mapping you want to do. So what, what do you want to output for the channels on the receiver, okay, on your PWM? So in my case, just to give you a look, I have output channel one is set to aileron. On channel two, take a guess. Anybody want to guess? It's elevator. <laughs> So there it is, elevator. So uh, mine is a direct mapping. On number three, I have nothing at all. And then on number four, guests, rudder, right? So it's a straight mapping one-to-one -one in my case for a simple setup like this. And then for output number five and six, seven, nothing. Nothing's necessary in those. Okay, so that's your, that's your output settings. So I'll leave that. Now we're gonna go back up into gains and I'll show you the gains real quick. So, on the axis, so if you have a if you have a roll axis to find, if you want it to correct on the roll axis, you set your axis here. The default values come in at zero. Um, Rob actually went out and did some testing. I have not flown this yet, but Rob did, and he did some testing, and he says P of 35 is pretty good. Leave I at zero, D at 10. That should be sufficient to get you started. Start with an axis of 50 uh, or 40, you know, 40, 50, somewhere in there. And then you can tune the suit after that, okay? But that should be enough. And don't forget, you've got a master gain up here. You can turn that down if it gets a little too much for you, okay? But this would be a good starting point for most cases. You might have a, a fast mover or, you know, a jet or something like that or a 3D plane. You might need to make some adjustments. Like if you're on a fast mover, you might want to bring that gain down some. You know what I mean? So, so just keep that in mind. But, yeah, you got to come in here and set your gains. And, by the way, if you don't set gains, I kind of fell for this when I was initially testing. I only set gains for roll. And then I said, wait, why is my elevator not working? It's because the P was set to zero. And that won't work. So you have to any, – any axis for, that you want – gyro uh gyro control on you have to set a gain you have to set the pids and you have to set a gain value okay so that's that you have to do that for every one of your control surfaces all right so we'll go back and then let's see the last thing we'll do is gyro settings so that's right here under gyro settings the gyro alignment all i can tell you i'm going to bring the model back into view so you can see it the only thing that i've been able to discover about this and I reserve the right to be completely wrong about this, but if you're still following, you'll figure it out. I believe this is forward. <laughs> I believe that's the case, but I can tell you it's either this edge or this edge, because if I have this edge forward or this edge forward, either the ailerons or the elevator are wrong, but one of them is wrong. Um, so if you if you can mount it this way, go ahead and do that. If you don't want to, you can mount it like that as well. But then you're either going to use 90 or 270, and you're still going to be correcting either your ailerons or elevator. So all I would say to you is fiddle with it. This one works for me. The way you see it right now with my pins forward just like that and setting it at zero, uh, I did have to reverse you know one of my outputs or something like the elevator, but it was fine that does work. So that is known and proven to work. So just mess with it. Just mess with it. That's the point. And in terms of options, you do have a lot of options. So for gyro alignment, you can do 0, 90, 180, and that's backwards, right? 270 would be rotated, the, the, you know, 270 degrees. You can flip it, and then you can have flipped 90, uh, 180, and 270. How cool is that? Isn't that awesome? I love it, man. It's so cool. It's pretty much everything you want. It basically lets you set your gyro however you want. You can do it like that, like that, like that, like that. And then you can flip it over and do the same thing. That's what that means. So just do, you know, work on your settings until it's behaving in the correct manner for your setup. Okay. And then uh, the la next thing is calibrate gyro. Now, here's what we believe. I'm not 100% clear on this, but I'm going to go ahead and do a, a gyro calibration. I can tell you that on the servos, nothing will happen. I'll leave the aileron in here just so you can see it, and I want you to see the LEDs. So when you hit calibrate gyro, on the ER8, we do see a blink on the LEDs on the receiver, but I'm not seeing it on the beta. So just hit it, and it does not. It, right now it does not exit on its own. Oh, wait, hold on. Uh oh, there it goes. It blinked. Yes, it did. How about that? I made a mistake. It does blink. Now, it should stop blinking when it's done. There it goes. And now we can back out of it. There we go. So it does blink, and that calibrates the gyro for level. That's what we expect. Okay. And then you can also go in and set sub trims if you're so inclined. Um, 
press OK, setting sub trims, press return to exit, and all that's going to do is level it out. I believe what it'll do is level it out based on where you are. So if you have that plane, a tail dragger, for example, and it's got a little nose up and you set sub trims, I believe that's what it's going to do is, is, is set it. But I'm not sure. I reserve the right to be wrong about that. You have to read the book on that one. I did, honestly, I didn't dig into that, to be perfectly frank with you. I did not dig into that one. So you'll have to do some reading on that one if you want to understand that better. I'm pretty sure I screwed that up, but whatever. Go, go read on it. You'll figure it out if you're interested in such things. All right, gyro settings. Uh, let's go back in and see. I think that's about it under gyro settings, but let's just check. So we did calibrate gyro. We looked at sub trims. Again, I, my fault. I didn't study on that one. And then here, remember I mentioned under safe, you can limit the angle. So this is limits the angle of roll. So if you don't want it to roll any more than 45 degrees, you can set that here. Same thing with pitch and then level. Um, the level, uh, I'm not sure what the level degrees means in terms of level pitch. I guess that's got to do with how much deflection it'll, it'll use to get you back to where you want to go. So the idea behind level, again, is that it holds its, its attitude. If you let go of the sticks, it levels itself back up. And then for your launch angle, you can specify your launch degrees. And for your hover authority, you can add a little, I guess it's probably a gain value. You can probably add a little bit of gain in there. So um, obviously, I'm not a complete expert on this. I just learned how to do it last night. So I haven't flown with it yet. I, I can guarantee you one thing I will, I will, I will learn this inside and out. Uh, because I've been waiting for this for quite a long time. Okay, that's it for the settings. Let's go back to the Blackboard and we'll see. We got the Express LRS Lewis setup. So that's it, top to bottom. So I'm going to go and check. I'm going to go check comments really quick and see if there's anything I need to address. And then we're going to we're going to end this video. So I think that's it. Uh, Copilot without GPS and ELRS receiver brand. Yeah, the idea, guys, if you're not like if you're not sure about this, the the whole intention here is to is to bake these in, right? That's the objective is to see them, it's to see them baked into the receiver, right? That's that's the ultimate goal. So right now, this is this is just a gyro on a PCB. It's external, but the whole idea is to bake it into the receiver. So we know we know it's coming. It's just a matter of time, right? Now that now that the gyro code works and we've seen working models of it, it's just a matter of time before somebody sticks that inside that case. It's, it's not gonna be long now, it, it'll happen. I know it'll happen. So there's, there's that part. So yeah, that's what we're after here. Uh, let's see, um, what weight do they flutter? Do they flutter, Rob? I didn't really run into constant wiggles. Okay, Rob's answering questions. Rob flew it, so he's got firsthand knowledge on there. Uh, like the old lemon receiver. Yep, very good. Honestly, I just wiggled the plane around and adjusted P&D until it looked about right and fluid. <laughs> just send it. Uh, wasn't that DS? Ooh, don't say that. We need GPS in it. Well, that's another thing that's coming. I mean, I think uh, it's certainly ha the tech is there, right? The tech is there. So hang tight. That, that's something that'll happen. Level and safe for the flight mode. Yeah, they, level keeps it level and safe doesn't let you pass a certain degree. Uh, another total game changer for Express LRS. Yeah, man, this to me, uh, Robert's on it, man. This to me is one of those big open gaps with Express LRS. But um, so for now, you, you can add the gyro yourself if you want to work with something like this, or you can wait for the integrated versions to come out. But I'm confident the integrated versions are on their way. And by the way, everything that I showed you guys tonight is pretty much the same um, for the Express for the ER8 and the Beta FPV with one exception. On the beta FPV, you don't have to do that. Um, uh, you don't have to do the hardware changes in the hardware HTML. That's not necessary on the beta FPV. Um, when you plug an SCL SDA to, uh, SDA SCL pins into this device and flash with the firmware, it automatically makes the changes in the UI. So you don't have to do anything for this one. And also, notice on the side here that little pin comes with the beta FPV receiver. So it just plugs right in, you solder it up to your gyro, and you're literally up and running once you flash that firmware. No time at all. And uh, that's heat shrink and double-sided tape. That's all I did to hold that gyro onto the receiver on both of them. Okay. All right. That's all I've got for tonight. I hope you guys like this kind of content. If you do, make sure you smash that thumbs up button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. You heard it here first, man. Express LRS Gyro. I, I've been waiting for this for a long time. I'm going to stick this on something, and I'm going to go fly something. I hope you do, too. 
Thanks for watching and hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to subscribe and make sure y'all tell Alex. Thanks. That's nice work, Alex. Appreciate you. That's all I've got for tonight. Take it easy.